Hi all, I'm Tony. This is SV Tapatio. We are building a cruising sailboat. Um, and it's to be seen behind me. We're some five and a half years or so into the build now. And perhaps it's important to say that that's been a, a part-time build. You know, I've been doing it weekends, evenings, holiday, vacation, whenever, whenever I've had a bit of time. Um, and one sort of big announcement is that that, that will be changing very soon and I should have a bit more time to put into the boat to, to get her finished and of course to go sailing in her. Um, so looking forward to that that's for sure. And well perhaps you can't tell by the weather today but but spring is springing. You know the birds you probably hear them they're going pretty pretty crazy out there they're full of the joys of it and uh, you know flowers coming up things are starting to look distinctly more spring-like and we started off this week Kerry and I both doing our bit to encourage spring to come. Well, yeah, now the weather's getting better, I could finally get onto the outside of the hull and, and uh, first job, of course, is to give it a good sand. It's been a while since I've put any paint on there. So, got the old sander out, had a quick run around, and I thought I would have to put a bit of light filler on after the sand, but I was so pleased with the way it came up that I don't think I will have to now. However, um, I decided you might remember that when I dragged the boat out of the shed, no, when I dragged the keel out of the shed, there was a bit of damage along to the paintwork along the bottom of the keel. And uh, I'd put a, one coat of, of epoxy sealer over that, you know, I'd sanded it back. But uh, before I put the proper epoxy sealer on the underside of the boat, I wanted to get that painted in, build up a number of coats on that. So I, I did that, gave it a quick sand. Uh, and started building up the, the zinc rich epoxy primer on that. Now I've got some uh, epoxy tar, the international VC2 I think it is, isn't it? VC tar, um, that I'm going to put on the metal section of the keel. Um, but I just wanted to build up some layers of that zinc rich epoxy on that damaged corner there first. Uh, so that's now done and I'm ready to go with the with the coal tar epoxy the you know that international stuff I just said. <laughs> so that's that and that's come out well and we're ready to go now on that front. And there's a couple of other things that I wanted to get get on with. One was the, the top of the rudder head where the tiller mounts to the rudder. I'd done some work on that a while back and uh, left it with a plastic bag over it to keep the weather out. And now I decided it was good enough that we could get back onto that and, and start that. And there's a couple of things I wanted to do. Firstly was where the, the pin goes through the tiller that connects the tiller to the rudder. I wanted to drill and fill and drill all that, which I did. Uh, but also I wanted to put a stop underneath the tiller so it didn't drop down too far. And I'll just turn this camera around and show you what I've done there. And there it is that it's a tube with a bolt through it you can see the bolt goes all the way through a 10 millimeter bolt with a 12 millimeter stainless tube on it so that the tiller drops down and that stops its maximum downward movement uh, and also that bolt serves to stop any twist in the top end of the of the rudder there at the rudder, rudder mounting area so that is now all done um, 
and we're ready to get some paint on there. It should be a lovely thing. I'll just dangle that over the side like that and let you look at that. Coming on well, ready for paint. And the other thing I've achieved this week has been that arch that you're seeing there. Um, and well, the arch I made in previous weeks, but the mounting, and let me zoom in a bit. The mounting's there for that arch. And I do want to emphasize that, that what you're seeing there is by no means the finished article. It's actually gonna have a, two side pieces, one each side, one port, one starboard that make it sort of a, a three-sided affair and much, much more stable than it is now. But uh, that's the initial mounting of it in position. And uh, let me turn around again. again. And you'll see that, that it allows us to lift the tiller up and could even strap the tiller up to it nicely up out of the way if need be. Um, and it gives us plenty of turning angle on the tiller like that as you see now the purpose of this arch or the main purpose of this arch is that there's going to be a, a short traveler on the top of it that the sheet from the main sail attaches to so that's where the control line from the main sail will come down um, and that allows us to clear the bimini it's a good height so it clears the bimini and should all work very nicely as i say still a fair bit of work to do to that yet yeah, it will be a three-sided affair so please it will <laughs> know that it will be a lot more stable than it now appears. There we go, anyhow. stuff so let's edge your way through it. So I'm just gonna interrupt there for, for a couple of minutes and uh, say a few words. One thing 
you know, over this series of videos, one thing I've tried, actually tried quite hard not to do, is, is to be, you know, teachery. I really don't want to tell people how to do things. Um, a few reasons. One of those is, is you know, I don't know what you guys know. There are many of you out there, lovely viewers. Some of you will be as or more capable than me, and some of you will be perhaps beginners and you know probably everything in between so I don't really feel that this is the place to tell people how to do things um, maybe maybe I'll shoot some how-to videos at some stage along the line and show one of the two one or two of the things that I do but but I say I try not to be too teachery um, but here I'm gonna comment on a couple of things that you've just been watching and the uh, first one is, uh, recently I've had a few questions about my welder and rods and whatever electrodes that I use. And here's the welder, or the box of the welder that I use, IPO tools. It's a portable, but I think it's, it's essential, it's essential quality is that it's an inverter welder. That's the important thing, it's an inverter welder. Because I had a standard welder before that, uh, which I used at the early stages of the build. And the world I'm getting with this little IPO Tools inverter welder is far better, much, much better. And they're so easy to use. It was somebody gave me the tip you know, in the comments and I went out and got one. They're cheap, relatively brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So that's the welder I'm using. It's a 160 amp inverter DC welding machine, MMA. The rods that I use, normally I use these they're Hyundai stainless rods. Um, they don't necessarily come in that box. I was fortunate to get one of those. But uh, they're very good. However, I don't think the rods are the critical thing. Sometimes, if I, if I haven't got any, I just go to the local DIY shop and buy these GYS stainless rods and there's not much difference, if, if any. I think the inverter welder is the critical thing. Um, and I'm still, you know, learning how to you know, set in the ampage, you know, improving what I do. And I believe, you know, it's going really well. It's getting, I'm getting good welds. The issue with stick welding stainless is the heat, or steel generally, is the heat and the distortion you get from it. That's something you have to watch for. With tubing pipe, it's not a problem, but with flat material, you get significant distortion from the heat. You have to look out for that or clamp it in position or find ways to, to, to fight that. And that's the welder. The second thing I wanted to talk about was, was the threading, cutting threads in stainless. And I have a very cheap set of uh, taps and dies. And it's this set here. I've got a lot of extras as well. But this is the, the metric set that I mainly use. And they're not good quality. For mild steel, regular steel, beautiful. Stainless, there are, you know, you have to go very carefully. Sometimes when on the tapered thread, it starts off fine, but when you're getting up to full thread diameter, you have to edge your way in back and forth, sometimes just a couple of millimeters of, of rotation. Sometimes it goes a bit more, sometimes it's just a little bit, and really we're feeling. And of course, if you try to bend the tap, it'll break. So, you, you know, real feeling. But you can cut threads in stainless. It's hard, but you can do it by hand. There we go.
tool is obviously a bit over challenged by stainless steel but uh, it did enough to to take it off smoothly with the hacksaw and you know it cut well in and then I finished it off with a hacksaw as you saw and just faced it up and it's come out okay but yeah we're not quite up to stainless in truth <laughs> for a test fit. Hopefully it all lines up. there we have it for this week 
I'm here tucked under the balcony. The rain seems to have set in for the day. Um, yeah, but as I say, thank you for watching. A massive thank you to the lovely, lovely people who support us on Patreon via PayPal. You guys rock. I'm going to take a break next week. I'm off to Scotland for the week. Uh, visit Hazel and uh, Alanya Wally out in the Outer Hebrides. Go and see what's going on over there. And then we'll be back and, and as I mentioned earlier, pushing on. Try and get this thing finished. Try and get it in the water. I still have no news from the trucking company. I don't know what's going on there. It's, I'm flabbergasted. Nothing. But there we go. I dare say we'll get there. Keep at it. See you next time. Bye.